ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone else that's watching, it is time once again for the Boruto episode review recap thing. And today's episode concerns episode three, Rock Lee Goes Wild, which was aired uh, on the 19th of April, 2017. I thought I'd start adding that, actually, just to date the episodes and stuff, um, you know, so... If you are watching in the future, you'll be able to know exactly when it aired. So, anyway, as with the other episodes, I'm just going to put stills in the background that I've taken from the episode. I may dabble with GIFs in the future to show you a few seconds of the animation, but as it stands, there's just going to be stills in the background. So if you do want to put this on in the background and just listen while you do something else, that is cool. Uh, so, let's jump straight into it. So... Right at the start of the episode, we have a weird outline thing of... I want to say it's a tailed beast, but I could be completely wrong here. Um, maybe it's not. Actually, I don't know what happened to the tailed beasts after Shippuden. I feel like I'm an idiot now. Did they... They were all... Well, they were all kind of taken into ten tail, uh, the ten tails thing, but then they were released like Naruto and the others brought them out. So I can't... Remember, oh, are they like, were they um, sent around to the different lands? I think they were sort of equally shared or something. Anyway, we have this weird red-eyed glowing thing. Um, my theory, possibly, is maybe it's linked somehow to the negative energy that Denki was surrounded by in the first episode. Maybe it emanates from him, something like that. I don't know. I could be completely wrong there. So then... Uh, on to the, the the meat of the episode, as it were. We are introduced to Metal Lee, who originally kind of comes across as kind of like his dad. You know, I mean, obviously he looks very, very much like his dad. But yeah, he is sort of they're doing kunai training at the start of the episode. And he walks up all brazen-like, as you'd expect, of a Lee. Of, well, Rock Lee's son and I guess Might Guy, who isn't a Lee. but you get the point. But then, um, but yeah, so it's then his turn to throw some kunai and a few of the other students like, yeah, go, Metal Lee. And then uh, we realise his sort of character trait, which is when he's put under pressure, he becomes really clumsy and can't do anything, which is interesting because obviously Rock Lee is kind of known for being motivated to do absolutely anything, but to the point where he just do stupid things. Whereas Metal Lee is kind of, well, not a reverse of that, but he's really confident until he actually has to do something, and then he's not at all. Oh, well, he messes up a bit. So I thought, you know, that, that was kind of fun. Um, So, yet again, this episode, because it's the third one, I'm just going to briefly brush upon the opening uh, animation. Again, the uh, music, you know, yet again, it's kind of slowly growing on me. It's pretty fun. Uh, and I just thought I'd put this up here, which is the right at the end of the opening. It's just a shot of Boruto punching the screen and Naruto kind of looking away just to, you know, signify that he's he's still there, but he's not the main focus anymore. He's kind of the background person making everything work because he's Okage, obviously. So, yeah, um, after this, unless we get a new uh, opening, I probably won't do any more focus on that, because everyone's seen it by now, and it's like a minute and a half, there's not much to analyse, unless I literally do frame by frame, and there's not much point, because that'll be boring. So, anyway, we'll, um, we'll skip ahead. So, oh, yeah, something I completely forgot to mention, so right at the start, uh, while he's doing that, um, the, the shot I showed of Metal Lee's foot getting caught in a big kunai, is one Boruto through, and because of it, he sort of, uh, you know, there's, there's damage and stuff. Metal Lee was thrown into some practice dummies, and they got uh, told off by Shino-sensei. It's really weird to see Shino as a teacher, but it's kind of cool as well, because that makes more sense. Like, what was Shino going to go on to be, really, apart from a teacher or someone in the background? So... Yeah, so Boruto and a few of the other students are kind of given punishment in that um, 
they've got to go fix Naruto's broken face, which is called back to the first episode. That's how it ended when they plowed that train into Naruto's stone face. So they get sent up there. Um, and yeah, so Metal Lee and Best Girl, I don't know her name. I actually, in, they may have mentioned it last episode, but I completely forgot. But she's a class representative, anyway, new Hinata, uh, Hinata 2.0. They're tasked to be supervisors. Uh, so, you know, everything goes as planned. They're working on it. And then, so this is a this is a scene I really liked, actually. During their break, they play like a handheld console thing. So th there's a few things I'd just like to quickly go over this. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty hard into games. It is generally my biggest passion. Uh, so it's really cool to see that they're kind of, they seem to be playing, so the game, first of all, seems to be based on Dragon Quest. I think it's not Final Fantasy because... It's a first-person look at the characters as opposed to like a side-on view of the Final Fantasy knows not, is known for. So that's cool. So yeah, it seems to be based on... Um, but it's interesting. It's kind of... I don't have any other screenshots of this, but the other people, Shikadai, and I can't remember who else was playing with them, but they talked about it as if it was a multiplayer game, which is interesting because they're kind of bringing aspects of Monster Hunter into it. Obviously... The graphics are very 8-bit or 16-bit, but by the sounds of it, the gameplay is already on like Monster Hunter levels where you know everyone teams up uh, and has their own role and stuff in defeating monsters, which is a really cool concept. I like that. And also just a just an extra little thing that the handhelds they look like open scrolls, uh, as in you can um, hold each side, which is both ends of the scroll. And then on top are like shoulder buttons, and then obviously the screen is where you look at the scroll as you unrolled it. So that's really cool. I like the whole combination of new technology meets meets traditional, you know, ninja stuff. So that, that was really nice. Um, that was probably present in Boruto the movie. I just don't remember what those things looked like. Anyway, moving on back to the plot. So yeah, Metal Lee gets nervous once again because he's put under pressure because he's uh, he's taking his time, and he ends up destroying the face again. So it kind of reverts back to how it was at the end of episode one. So then later on in the episode, Shikande tells him that he needs to relax and stop be trying so hard, kind of like not getting him down really, but you know telling him, hey, relax, stop, stop trying so much, you know, just just do. Do how you feel. Don't don't feel so pressured. Um, and I don't know. Apparently, that was bad for him to say. I didn't get that part. I thought Shikanta was being pretty reasonable. I just tell him to chill out and take it slow. But I don't know. Uh, maybe I misunderstood. So anyway, <laughs> when we get back to the house, we she uh, we see that Tamari, his mum, obviously, is laying into him for uh, being in trouble at school. It's great to see Tamari again. I do like Shikamaru and Tamari are one of the best couples, in my opinion, from Naruto. It's really cool to see her being all mum esque. Uh, and then also we see Shikamaru, yay! And he joins in. Well, he comes home from a busy day. Uh, and, you know, it's nice to see old Shikamaru. He's definitely, hands down, one of my favourite characters. So Shikadai, by definition, by default. Is also one of my favorite characters because his dad's so cool. Um, and then there was this shot where they both get told off by Tamari. I didn't manage to capture it, but they both said Mendoxin or what a drag, uh, as Chikamaru is known for saying. So it's cool that it's rubbed off on his son. So, anyway, back to the actual main plot thing. Uh, next day, we see that Metal uh, Lee shows up to school again, but this time. Um, Boruto's eye activates again, as it did in episode one, and we see that Metal Lee has been possessed by the weird purple shadow thing that Denki did in the first episode. So it seems to be a theme where people... Uh, well, so, okay, so this is my theory on it. I don't know, maybe this is really obvious and everyone knows this. Maybe I've missed something, but this is my theory. So, it affected Denki and Metal Lee. In similar circumstances, they were both kind of lonely. They didn't have many friends, though. Um, you know, classmates and people they looked up to, 
kind of berated them and belittled them and told them they weren't that great. And then they show up possessed. So it appears to be something that's feeding off negative energy of ninjas. And again, I think this may tie into who we saw at the start of the episode here with the red glowing eyes. I think he has something to do with it. It'll be interesting to see. So yeah, uh, Boruto's eye activates and he sees that metal is possessed. And then, so Shikade approaches him to apologise. Obviously, um, it's established that only Boruto can see this weird shadow possession. Not shadow possession to be confused with Shikamaru and Shikade's abilities, uh, ninjutsu, but more, you know, the weird possession thing. So Shikade can't see that, obviously, and Metal Lee turns on him and they start to fight. Um, which is, you know, it, it's a pretty... It's not a tense fight, per se, but Metal Lee is made out to be incredibly strong. He makes, like, several dents in walls and stuff. So, you know, that's interesting. And then, so, he, um, Shikade lures him into a forest where Boruto and Inojin team up with him. And, yeah, so he, Boruto's uh, eye activates again during the fight, so clearly showing there's a strong link between the weird shadow possession thing and Boruto's eye. And, yeah, oh, also, we get to see very briefly uh, some more of Inojin's attacks, which are little sparrows that are green and yellow or blue and yellow or whatever. It's kind of cool to see that, again, Sai's artwork, his father, was all you know, black, just with ink, but Inojin has got better, and you know, he, he's more diverse with his colours and stuff. I, I just like the little details like that. So yeah, later on in uh, the, well, round two of the fight, where it's three versus Metal uh, Lee, he basically goes Super Saiyan, uh, and, well, I don't think it's opening a gate, but he gets really, really pumped up, thanks to the Shadow Possession thing, but he is ultimately defeated by Boruto again, I think. Um, and the mist dissipates yet again. It rises off him and leaves. Which maybe... So another part of my theory is maybe Boruto has something to do with that. Maybe he's the one... He's the only one that can get rid of this shadow thing. Because when he touched Denki in the first episode, it also left. So maybe he needs to touch people who are possessed to get rid of it. I don't know. Again, it's clearly going to be the mystery of the first arc or two of this series, so we won't find out for ages. And then after the fight, they are friends that Metal Lee, obviously he's like his dad, he loves training and he wants other people to train just as hard as he is. And then after that, we get to see a little smidge of uh, Boruto's home life. Himawari greets him and says hello, and Hinata's there making dinner. And it's just, it's an adorable family. I really love Himawari and Hinata. And, um, yeah, uh, so just after that, Boruto asks uh, Hinata about the Byakugan, because he's clearly curious about what the hell is going on with his right eye. And so she explains to him, and we see a lovely little picture of Neji there with the other ninja. Uh, obviously, spoilers, before his death. Uh, and. Yeah, it was it was really nice to see Neji again. I you know it was his his death was pretty darn. It's kind of out of the blue. I did feel that maybe he didn't have the best death really, but it was still quite sad. So yeah, he just asked his uh, Hinata about the Akugan. Tries to hide it. You know he's just curious, but clearly his eye thing is going to play a bigger role in the coming episodes. Um, also, I think it adds even more credence that he asked about the Byakugan, which I think just hints that his right eye ability to see these shadow things is what happens when someone from the visual jutsu line and someone from the chakra jutsu line has a kid, as Hinata and Naruto did. And talking about Naruto, we do see him right at the end there, that he comes home and Hinata's uh, like, oh, you know, dinner's ready, come join us. And he heads straight to bed. I am, I am kind of impressed that they had the, um, they they had the guts to make Naruto in this part kind of. Well, he's not a dick. He, he's he's not purposely doing it. Obviously, his job is really tough, but they're not afraid to make him look like a bit of a neglectful father, which is, I think, really interesting because you know you wouldn't think of Naruto like that. You'd think that 
he throned himself with his family. And then, just to wrap it up, we have the next time preview thing, which is the real introduction of Saradar. I think Saradar is how you pronounce her name. Uh, which is interesting. The setup seems to be that her and Boruto fall out over a kind of sandwich thing. There's only one left. And so, obviously, Shino puts them in an arena and makes them fight. Don't know what that's going to be, but that's kind of cool, because I am looking forward to when they do form their groups, because obviously we know who's in Boruto's because of Boruto the movie. And that about wraps up episode 3, Metal League Goes Wild. So, just uh, going to give a few thoughts, and then I'll wrap it up. Quite enjoyed this episode. It was a little light. Um, the I, It spent like quite a few a few minutes focusing on Shikadai feeling bad for telling Metal E to chill out and stop trying so hard. Which I thought was a little... I don't know, I, I didn't totally get why that was a bad thing. Like, it, you know, he seemed to just care for Metal E. But I don't know. That's, uh, I, I didn't think there needed to be that much focus on it, but obviously this is in the vein of Naruto as well, where several episodes will be spent on fairly insignificant things, so it's not that much, uh, you know, it's not that much of a departure, I should have expected it, really. Yeah, I enjoyed, I'm looking forward to more. I like that they're slowly building to something that'll happen with Boruto's eye and the dark mist that possesses people. And, you know, it'll, it'll make for an interesting little arc to get them all to band together. Um, also, yeah, I, you know, hats off to the fact that each episode is slowly introducing characters instead of with Naruto, where we're thrown in, he's a member of a class, and then we get to meet the members. This is kind of starting from the ground up where Boruto makes a friend, we learn about them, he'll make another one in the next episode, things like that. So hopefully... Well, next episode is going to make friends with Sarada, obviously. So that'll, that'll be an interesting one. Kind of excited for that, because Sarada is an interesting character. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'll be making another episode next week for the fourth episode. I can't remember the name of the fourth episode, but it'll be in the title for that review. And as always, stay tuned for more stuff. And let me know what you think of these reviews in the comments, if you've got time. I would love to hear some feedback. And until next time, goodbye.